Welcome to Informatica support videos. My name is Vivek Sahu and today we will continue our discussion on installing Power Exchange on MBS part 3. This is the last part of our installation. We will do the full installation today. As end of the video, installation process continued. In our last videos, we have installed Power Exchange on mainframe and we have started our listener and agent component of Power Exchange. In this video, we'll start the other components that is Agent and ECCR and we'll do a road test through Navigator. Starting Logger and ECCR. Before starting Logger and ECCR, you need to submit the job setup CC2. The setup CC2 job uses the options that we specified to create the Power Exchange Logger ATM UPAM module and also defines the active log datasets in the power exchange logger emergency restart datasets. To start the logger and agent, we will submit the job setup CC2 first after it completes. We have to copy the logger and ECCR job that is logger STP and ECCR DB2 to user.proclip because of similar regions as listener and agent. We need to start this job as started task, not as batch job. Rename the logger and ECCR jobs so that you will better understand the jobs when you will see the jobs in your spool. Both the components can be started using the same command slash s logger job name and slash s ecci job name. We can start the logger job at this moment but before starting the ECCR, we need to create a capture registration using the power exchange navigator. Then we can start our ECCR. Then we can run a road test to check that Power Exchange is installed correctly or not. About Power Exchange Navigator, creation of capture registration, and doing road test, we'll discuss further. I have created the capture registrations and I have started the ECCR. You can see all my jobs, listener, agent, logger, and ECCR are now started as a started task and all are running. Now we'll go to the capture registration creation process. A capture registration defines a source segment, table, database or dataset for which Power Exchange captures changes. Power Exchange stores capture registrations in the CCT file on the source system that is specified by the registration group to which the capture registration belongs. Now we'll create and capture registration. To create capture registration, we have to first open the Power Exchange Navigator. First go to the installation library where the installers are present. In that library, we will get a file called dtlui.exe. We can click on that exe file, then Navigator will open. Navigator looks like this. In this, we have to go to the data capture, we have to expand the data capture. There you'll find registration groups. Then expand the registration group. Right click on the registration group. Click on add registration group. This screen will come up. In this screen, name is user defined. We can give anything. Location is the location where listener is running. That is the listener node name. And the type is DB2 as we are in creating a table on DB2 and we are capturing the changes for that DB2 table. And user ID password or mainframe user ID and password and database instance is the subsystem what we are using. In this case we are using DSNB. Then click next then we will go to the capture registration. In this capture registration page we can give the name as per user defined name and in the creator we have to give the user ID that creates the tables for the tables which you want to capture register. Then click next then the next screen will list out all the tables created by that user. Then we have to double click on the table. It will list out the columns on the right hand side. If you want to capture changes for all the columns, then you can select all the columns. If you want to capture for selected columns, you can deselect the other ones and then click next. The next screen will come up where we have three options, type, status and contents. We'll discuss about these three things in the next slide. Then we have to click finish. 
the first option was the status option a capture registration has a status option that indicates whether changes are captured for the registered source or not active means to capture changes for a source set the status for the capture registration to active so that the changes will be captured inactive means to prevent data from being captured for a source before the target is materialized set the status to inactive then the option called condense if we select none the capture registration is not eligible for condensed processing and if we select part the capture registration is partially condensed processing and if we select full the capture registration is eligible for full processing then we have to select the finish and the capture registration is created for that table now we will do the road test to check that our installation process is complete to do the road test these are the steps we have to follow we have to go to the first extraction map we have added the registration group now we are going to the extraction map if we have added registration group as regtest that is automatically added to extraction map just double click on that extraction map it will list out what all tables are registered for capture registration we have done for cap test just double click on the cap test the next screen will come up with the columns that you have selected for capture register and this is the row test button you can click on the row test button then the next screen will come up in this screen you can see the select query as select start from the table name so in this row test is will list out all the changes that is being done on the table make sure when you do the row test on you to create the capture register all the components that is listener agent logger and ecr are up now all these things are self populated if you want to check all those things go ahead and check those things and then you have to select on go and the row test results will be shown up now we have restart the end of the video like we have completed all the full installation if you have any feedback any queries we'd love to hear from you please write to us at supportvideos@informatica.com or you can tweet us at twitter.com/infosupport thank you